All right. So you have heard that you are an Israelite. What to do next? Where do we go from here? Okay. So this is what this class is talking about. And um, the moves that you should be making in these last days, all these things that's going on, where you should be going, what you should be doing. So uh, we're going to start with Psalms chapter 119 and verse 60. So you got the good news. You got the wake up call. Um, you're, 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 you're slowly moving out of the matrix, realizing that you've been in the matrix all this time and that there's things that you should be doing and things you should not be doing. Okay. So we're going to focus on the things you should be doing and, and also, um, things you stay away from. Okay. But let's bring that out. Psalm chapter 119, verse 60. Con, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 60. Whenever everybody have it, please say con. 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 Uh. Verse 60. Con, you bring it out. Go ahead, King. You on um, you on mute. Salakia, verse sixty. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Han, so what you want to do is make haste. Okay. Um, I don't know how many more news reports we can fit into a twenty-four hour news cycle, but it's immense. It's a lot. It's tornadoes. It is earthquakes in diverse places. You have pestilence popping up. That, um, you know, you know, bird flu that has been pretty much confined to birds. Now people are getting it, and it's deadly. So you got pestilence. Um, wars and rumors of wars, where it's Ukraine and Russia, Iran and Israel, Taiwan and China, uh, the United States government and its own citizens. Um, all these prophecies are unfolding before our very eyes. So you got to make haste to keep the commandments. You don't want to drag your feet. You don't want to, uh, I got time. I, you know, I can, I can do whatever I want. Maybe, you know, have a hot girl summer and then you know, in the fall, I'm going to start keeping the commandments. I'm going to start reading more. It's not what you want to do because the Most High said, you know, his son is coming like a thief in the night, you know? So we don't know exactly when he's coming, you know, but we can read um, the scriptures. We can see the um, that the fig tree is ripening, so to speak, symbolically speaking. So when you, these things start to happen, you know that the end is nigh. All right, let's go to Sirach 5. And verse seven. So once you see all these things happening, once you, uh, you, you know, you're witnessing things for yourself, you can watch the news and then read the scriptures at the same time. You start to realize this thing's coming to an end. Esau's world's coming to an end and the kingdom to come, Jacob in rulership, Yahweh Shai being the king is quickly approaching. Okay. So don't make haste. I mean, it's like, yeah, make haste, you know, don't drag your feet. All right. Now is the time that you get really close to God, read the scriptures, pray fast, meditate. Okay. Repeat, repent. You know what I mean? Um, the daily basis, you know what I'm saying? Now be fast on the daily basis, but make sure you're fasting as well to get the, the spirits off you. Okay. Let's bring that out. Sirach chapter 5, verse 7. Con, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 5 and verse 7. Can everybody have it? Please say con. 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 Make no tarry to the turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Huh. So you're thinking everything's good, you know what I mean? Um, nothing changed for me. This is a typical Saturday, a typical Wednesday, a typical Thursday, but spiritually looking in on things that 
this place is collapsing economically. Talked about that earlier about the the dollar store closing, high end stores closing, um, instant judgment. You know what I mean? People uh, stealing from one another and then dying in car crashes. Um, people uh, shooting at one another and the police being right there. Like there's, it's not a um, a, a huge lap in um, committing an offense and that judgment. You know, some of that judgment is. Um, you know, permanent, you know, people have died in fiery crashes. Okay. So you don't want to, all right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm selling drugs right now. I just got to knock off this one pack and I'm good. And then, you know, I put this money up to something else, whatever you want to make haste to follow these commandments. You know, you want to get away from sin in these last days. Okay. Um, Cause suddenly the wrath of the Lord come forth, you know, this is a time of judgment. You know, just coming out of the Passover season, still people are getting judged. And, you know, it's from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know, um, whole families are getting taken out of it, taken out of here um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a blink of an eye. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 22. Um, one guy in Southwest Philly, right? He shot up, um, pretty much the neighborhood, right? He was going around. He had a police scanner. He had a bulletproof vest. He was on a mission and he was just shooting random people, you know, quote unquote, random people shooting in the cars and everything like that. Right. And he said, I was sent by Yahweh. You know what I mean? And of course that's crazy talk, right? You know, people are like, well, God would never send anybody like that. Well, he puts the spirit on people to do some things, you know what I mean? And that guy acted as a deaf angel that day, and he killed a significant amount of people. And then also, they had a, um, um, his parents, his, his not parents, Slocky, his father um, burned somebody to or to two family members. I don't know if they died or whatever, but he lit them on fire. That's it's one of the strangest ways, you know what I mean? Um, somebody can get back at somebody, but this is what he did. And, you know, that that bloodline seems very interesting to say the least. But um, you know, symbolically speaking, you know, the most high is coming with fire. You know what I'm saying? So I see that as people that normally you know, would just be sitting there talking to themselves, like you just ignore, you know, just um somebody that obviously has some mental issues or whatever. The most high is putting a spirit on them to physically put hands on people. And I know in New York City, it was big that um people just walk around punching eating my women. And it was like a TikTok trend, like I just got hit in the face. You see her face swelling up and she's all crying and stuff. Like for no reason, I was just walking out hit in the face. Like that's kind of not normal, you know, if somebody just walk up to you and punch you in the face. But that spirit is jumping on people. Um, it's a spirit of vengeance, it's a spirit of judgment coming from how about Shima was shot. So we gotta make haste that we don't run into anything like that and um that we, we are protected in these last days. So let's go to Matthew chapter 22. And verse one, but the one and one thing we got to realize is that we're working on the most highest time. It's not our time. Our time is is insignificant when it comes to how about Shemuel Shai. One day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day with him. Okay, so when we get information, you know, like I said, no hot girl summer. No, I'm gonna knock off this pack. I'll be all right until fall. No, we're on a time clock that we don't even know what the clock is, okay? So that's why we have to make haste. Uh, can you bring that out? Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. Con, this is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 1. When everybody have it, please say con. 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 And the Amashiach Yahushua answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, Go ahead. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son. Uh, read on. 
and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. So um, this is a parable, right? Talking about the kingdom of heaven. All right. Sent forth to his servants, and they wouldn't come. Go ahead. Verse 4, again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my falcons are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Come on to the marriage. So that's what we do. When we go to the highways and byways, we bid our people to the marriage, okay? Marriage of the bridegroom, marriage of Israelites being married to Yahweh Shem you know what I mean? You know, we we fall short. You know, we've been through several captivities. We're in a captivity now for not listening. All right. So we 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 go out there and plead and um, you know, with our people, like, come on, this is it, you know, and this is the last captivity. So this is really, you know, put put it all on the line. Okay, go ahead. Verse five. But they made light of it and went their ways. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. Come on, man. I got time for that, man. I'm, I'm about to go shopping right now. It's a Sabbath. I'm going shopping. You know, people make light of this thing. Like, like there's a reset button. You know what I mean? Um, and that's one thing that uh, this, I want to say, I would say this generation, it's like I can start all over again, right? No, you can't. You know what I mean? These things are permanent, you know? And, um, you know, something that we push we go out to the highways and byways, okay? Don't make light of this situation. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Kind. Go ahead. The servants of Yahweh, Hashem, Kind. Go ahead. Kind. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Huh. You know, um, if anybody uh, touches his prophets, you know what I mean? Um, it says Revelation, uh, you know, fires spew for their mouths. You know, it's going to be a bad job, you know, as we say. Go ahead. Verse 8. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Huh. Go ahead. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Bid to the marriage. Go ahead. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Huh. So it talks about the uh, kingdom of heaven being like a net casting out a net, you know, you know, uh, and you get good and you get bad. You know what I mean? When you get the net, you know, bring up to the boat, you got to pick out what's the good and what's the bad, right? So everybody's kind of in here together, like, come on, you could be part of uh, the elect, you know what I mean? You might be part of one third, you know, come and follow these laws, statutes, commandments and live, you know what I'm saying? And some people were going to go further into that. Some people... It's like me, you know. It's not for me, you know. I would rather go back to Christianity. You know, I was I was more comfortable as a Muslim. Uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever religion ideology, you know, they they fall back on. You know, but that's not legit because it's legit in their eyes, right? But this is the say of the Lord. This is the Bible. It's tried and tested centuries. Okay, so you know, going going back backtracking is um is counterproductive especially if you want salvation if you want to um have eternal life in the future for you and your family you know what i mean but people you know they make videos uh i used to be a black hebrew israelite you know what i'm saying why i left the black hebrew israelites is really why the most high is not dealing with you anymore that's what it should be titled but um you know, every man's writing it in their own eyes. Okay, uh, let's go to verse 11. Uh, verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. 
car. So he's not wearing the proper attire. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we're reading about uh, children. I mean, not children, but people that are wearing strange apparel. What's going to happen to them in the future? Okay. Uh, people that put on the the uh, the scarlet colored robes of, of Babylon. What's going to happen to them in the future? You know what I'm saying? But this person is not dressed properly. But he's probably like, Man, I just came off the streets. What do you mean? What do, you know? What do you want me to do, right? But what what does the scripture say? Go ahead, read the next verse. Verse twelve, and he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Huh. So, go look that as you know, not having your fringes on. Why are you not wearing your fringes? You know. I don't know. You know, what do you want me to do? I was just, I was just going outside, just going to the store real quick. And somebody said, come on, let's go to the wedding, this wedding. I said, fine, right? Go ahead. Verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, bid him hand and foot. Bind him. And take him away. Bind him hand and foot and take him away. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing the teeth. Huh. So what what happened? It didn't end up good good for him. You know what I mean? And symbolically speaking, with the fringes, you wear them because you're supposed to hmm? go ask mom. Um slack, yeah. Um you know, symbolically speaking, not having your you know fringes on is not keeping the commandments, right? Because Literally not having them on is not keeping the commandments, but you wear them so you keep the commandments. So this person is not wearing the proper attire. He's wearing strange apparel. And what happened to him? They bound him up and threw him in the utter darkness. Okay. So that's what we say. We make haste. You know what I'm saying? We got to make haste to follow these law, statutes, commandments because doing the opposite of that is a death sentence. All right. Let's continue on. Let's go to Acts chapter 17, verse 30. You're like, Dad, I never, I always wasn't wearing fringes. I always wasn't keeping the Sabbath. I didn't know the Sabbath was from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to cook or work for wages. I've been doing that my entire life. You know, I've been um, having an evil eye towards my brother. You know what I mean? Towards my sister, dogging them out, you know, um, and, and and leaving them. I've been doing a lot of these things, you know, I'm hard headed. I'm rebellious. My parents been telling me this since I was born, my teachers, everybody, you know what I mean? So I guess that's kind of like my personality at this point in time. I didn't know I'm not supposed to be like that. I'm supposed to be humble, shame faced. I'm um, supposed to, you know, uh, read the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to search out the scriptures. I didn't know I was supposed to do all these things, right? But now that you realize that you're God's chosen people, you he woke you up out of uh, being blind, right? Sitting there in darkness, not realizing you're supposed to do some things, right? Now, con, now, what am I supposed to do? You bring that out, Acts 17 and verse 30. Con, this is the book of Acts. Chapter 17 and verse 30. When everyone has it, please say con. Oh. Con. Con. And the times of the ignorance of Yahweh went at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Con. So at that time, you were, you know, it was time of your ignorance. You didn't know any better. You know, how much I said when he was on the on the cross, forgive them, Father, if they know not what they do. Because if you knew that not eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster was uh what the what God required, then you probably wouldn't eat those things. You know, and if you knew the power of the most high and had to fear the most high, you definitely wouldn't eat those things. You know, if you read the scriptures and see what happened to people that have transgressed the law, 
it'd be something that you obviously don't want have to happen to you. So it's like, I, I got to fall in line. You know what I'm saying? So um, with that in mind, the most high says it's time to repent. That's something we got to realize we got to do. You make haste to follow these commandments, but you have to repent from the things you've done in your past. You know what I mean? Um, the sins that you've done. You know, it's not the things you've done, it's sins. You're repenting for your sins. And what's sin? Sin is transgression of the law. So following the law is crucial. The law, statute, commandments, what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do, is very important in these last days. Okay, let's go to Acts 3 and 19. And um, yeah, the brother put up a... a uh, precept, you know, um, talking about the Lord's sacrifice will punish the princes, princes and the king's children all as are clothed with strange apparel. All right, so we got to get our get our actual garments together, like fringes and stuff like that. But spiritually speaking, you know, we got to put on the 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 garments of you know cleanliness. You know what I mean? Our white garments of Following these law, statutes, commandments, being clean, okay? Being purged from sin, okay? All right, let's bring that out. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. John, this, uh, this is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. When everybody have it, please say con. 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 Con, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So we have to repent and be converted. We have to change. We cannot be the same. You know, uh, you know, you, you get, you work from hard days work, and then you, uh, you go home, you take a shower, and you get cleaned up, and you put on those same dirty clothes. Now nah, you switch up, you know, wear a new clean garment. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to put uh, new wine in old bottles. The old bottle's going to burst, you know? So when you change, you know, um, your mind state, um, what you're going to do, you're going to, I'm going to follow these laws, that's commandments. I know I'm an Israelite. I'm, I'm focused. I'm going to get focused. You know what I mean? Um, you can't go back to your vomit. Of course, a just man falls seven times, but you don't want to make Christian, you know, have a Christian mind state when it comes to those things. Like, well, nobody can follow the law, so I can't follow any of the law. No, um, the commandments are not grievous. You know, from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, the Most High says, don't do anything. Sounds good to me. You know what I mean? Um, new moons, you show up, you... Uh, Pray, read some scriptures, pray over the food, eat some food, and eat, drink, and be merry. That's following the law. So it's not as difficult as, um, um, you know, you one might think, 613 law, statute, commandments, but it's getting away from that old man, that old woman that was in the world doing um, God knows what with Lord knows who. You know what I'm saying? Um the, the addictions we picked up in our past, you know, getting away from those things can be difficult, but the Most High has a, a way to get out of that, you know? He has a body that you can call, you know? You can reach out to brothers, reach out to sisters. You can fast, you know, get those demons off of you. And you can ask other brothers to fast with you. Ask other sisters to fast with you. Can you fast with me? I'm dealing with a tough time. You know, so you have people that are are following the law, statutes, commandments to the best of their ability, they're willing to help you. So, you know, um, and angels that are ministering spirits, you know, uh, somebody might come and just drop a message on you that, like, wow, that changed my perspective, you know, because the word, the Lord works in mysterious ways, as the Christians say, but it's very true. He's very mysterious. All right, um, let's go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2.
I mean, you got it. You can bring it out. Con, this is the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. When everybody have it, please say con. 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 Say shalom. Shalom. Okay. Shalom. Con. Shalom, young king. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Shalom, young man. He's excited. Con, um, con, we have Romans 12, verse 2. You can bring it out. Con, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. Con, so don't be conformed with this world. This world is going downhill fast. Uh... Jim Crow, Joe Biden, you know what I mean? Another hundred billion to outside of the country to fund these wars. Um, his son is under a federal indictment. Donald Trump is has, you know, I think I can tempt a court for breaking a, a um um a gag order or something like that. Um, just totally gone. And these people are gonna be the president or potentially be the president of the United States. So one thing we're dealing with is the collapse of society. Why be conformed with this world? Why, oh, once I vote, I'm going to vote, make sure Trump doesn't get in office. Who cares who gets in office? It doesn't matter at this point. Either Trump wins and they're going to riot or Trump loses and they're going to riot. Like at this point, Esau is just, you know, it's a checkmate scenario. He has nowhere to go. Okay. So building up your riches on this side I get it, but you don't want it to um, take away from the scriptures, take away from your walk with the most high God. You know, of course, we still got to pay bills, still got to eat, you know, mortgage, rent, whatever. Right. But that shouldn't be the number one priority. Your number one priority should be following the law, statute, commandments in the Bible, what the most high um, wants to show you, tell you, you know, um, you know, that that's crucial. That's the way. All right. Um, and prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. And he wrote it out. You know, we have the scriptures. We have these books, you know, that we follow these law, statutes, commandments written in the scriptures. That if we can do that, we can have a level of perfection. You know what I'm saying? Like Job. Job was perfect in his ways, right? Because he was restored in his ways, you know? That's why his friends were like, well, it's because you're sinning, Job, and this, that, and the third. But most I said, no, Job's perfect, right? Because he's restored from his sin. And that's what we got to aim to do, constantly repent, okay? Let's go to uh, Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Because you being new into the truth is learning everything all over again. Okay. And we'll get to that as well. Um, we got it. You can bring it out. Shalom, everybody. Uh, con, this is the book of the second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 14. When everyone have it, please say con. Con. John. 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 Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Huh. So the mortal thoughts, the mortal, okay. Um, oh man, it, the Eagles, what they get on, on the third round? I missed that. I'm I'm gonna spend the next two hours researching that. You know what I mean? Oh, what's going on with uh, you know, Kendrick was destroying Drake. Drake, we got to go into a uh, um, like a breakdown for eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, that can be uh, you know, this is if you're new into the truth. You know what I'm saying? Brothers that have been in the truth, sisters that have been in the truth long enough, can see the. The spiritual side of that spiritual aspect, you know what I mean? 
um, Drake being like a plant, you know, uh, coming into hip hop and he's doing videos with sexy red and he's just trying to, you know, dismantle the, um, the children of Israel, you know what I'm saying? Dismantle so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. The video come out about Drake that he's, uh, his mother's Jewish and he's really proud of his Jewish heritage. He has a bar of misfa and everything. He is straight Jewish. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, in reality, uh, I believe his father is Jake. So he's, he's an Israelite, but he sees himself as Jewish. So the music that he puts out is what they want him to put out. And the reason why he's so popular is not because he's so talented is because they own all the media. I could be the best rapper in the world if, all my, if everybody in HOI owned Fox News and CBS and all this other stuff, you know what I mean? I go to Elder, like, uh, yeah, can you get me on Fox News at prime time? And you know what I mean? And I'm in this magazine, I'm on this billboard and all this other stuff. So eventually it's going to be sinking into people like, man, this guy's a really good rapper. I could be the trashiest rapper, period. But if you see me enough, you you know, and you, uh, the, automatically I get a million views, you know, every time I put a video out, every time every, automatically uh, I get a million followers on all my social media. So people are like, well, he must be good if everybody else is following him, you know? So Kendrick was taking shots at him, you know? And um, you got the rap bloggers, Gilly and Cameron, who got a million dollars worth of game. And Cameron, who, you know, is making more money in, podcasting and he did it you know rapping or whatever he said something like that him and mace they don't like it you know they don't like them people coming at drake because drake is the poster boy of babylon rap in babylon okay so i i say that to say there's levels to this right but when you first get in you want to find out about these laws that commandments you want to make haste to follow these commandments you don't want to uh really bring in worldly things in with you, you know, in this walk. Because you're leaving out of the matrix. You know what I mean? If you're leaving out of the matrix, you don't want to, you know, carry baggage into the matrix. I mean, not into the truth. Slock you. Okay. Um, so let's go to Mark chapter 4 and verse 3. So the mortal thoughts is, is, is things that aren't going to matter in the kingdom. Don't spend four days and four nights contemplating something that is is not important. I don't know if that D-back is going to be really that good on the Eagles, though. You know what I mean? He was good in college, you know, but I'm going to I'm going to do my research on him. I'm going to go back to when he played in Pop Warner football and his high school. I'm going to watch all his tapes and everything. You're wasting time. You're not making haste to go to the commandments. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's bring that out. Mark. Chapter 4, verse 3, Bubba Bashar. John, this is the book of St. Mark, chapter 4 and verse 3. When everybody have it, please say con. 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 Hearken, behold, there went out a sour to sow. A sower, sower to sow. Sower to sow, so like. Con, go ahead. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Con, so we're going to go through this uh, parable, and then Yahweh Shai breaks it down, what it means. So um, go ahead. Verse 5. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth on earth of earth God. God. so this is a parable and he talks about why he um you know gives us parables because it's not for everybody so if you can get it you can get it you know what i mean if you can't get it it ain't for you you know um not necessarily anybody's watching now because obviously you made it this far to listen but um you know, some things are are hidden, some dark sayings, you know, it's not readily available to everyone. Okay, go ahead. Verse six, but when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Con, 
with it away. Go ahead. Verse 7. And so and some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it and yield no fruit. Time. Read on. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. Huh. So they fell on good ground, right? That the seed fell on good ground. Go ahead. Verse 9. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Go ahead. Verse 10. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of Yahweh. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Time. All right, so let's go to uh, St. John 15 and verse 15. Now he's going to break down what that parable meant. Okay. So for both right now, if you go to uh, John chapter 15 and verse 15, Bubba Shaw. Uh, this is the book of St. John, chapter 15 and verse 15. Will everybody have it? Please say con. Uh, okay. Con, you start at 14. Con, verse 14. Ye are my friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. Con, so, I mean, that's a, a beautiful thing to be friends with you. How was I? But it's not like, you know, oh, uh, we go to the same grade school and build the same neighborhood, so we're friends. No, to be friends with Yahweh Shai, you got to do what he requires of you. You got to do what he commands you to do. You know what I mean? Um, you might be coming from Christianity, and Christianity says, hey, man, come as you are, do whatever you want. Hey, man, God loves everybody. You know what I mean? But he says, in order to be my friend, you got to do what I tell you to do, whatever I command you to do. Go ahead. Verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Con. Okay, so we got to read these scriptures. We got to search out these scriptures, right? We got to figure out um, what he's talking about. You know what I mean? Because it says, you know, um, every, everything I heard of my father, I made known unto you. So where? Where can I, where can I find that? In the Bible. Right. What do you got to do? You got to read it. Um, coming from Christianity, I know I didn't read it. You know what I'm saying? So um, one thing we start reading it, you start. It, it opens up your mind. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, I didn't didn't know that was there. Oh, I thought that was, you know, um, just a saying that people said. Most sayings that people say and then words and the um, the names of people stem from the Bible. You know, this is a, a foundation in life. OK. Uh, go ahead, can we read verse 16? Go on, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it, give it you. Huh. All right. So we didn't choose this. You didn't choose to be part of uh, the Hebrew Israelites. you right. You didn't choose to be God's chosen people. He chose us, you know, and he chose and not even choosing us as a nation, but also choosing us as individuals to find out the truth. You know, so this is something that's very it should be very humbling, you know, should definitely take this serious. And um and move accordingly. Okay, let's go back to Mark fourteen, Saki four and fourteen, so we can get the the breakdown from Yahweh on what the parable of the sower 
means. Con, this is the book of St. Mark, chapter 4 and verse 14. Everybody have it? Please say con. 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 Verse 14. The sower soweth the word. Con. Huh. The, the sower soweth the word. Go ahead. So it's the word. Go ahead. Verse 15. And these things are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taking away the word that was sown in all, sold in their hearts. Con. Immediately. Satan shows up immediately. This, he has no, you know, uh, time doesn't doesn't matter when it comes to things of that he is right there. And you see that um, we're on the highways and byways edifying somebody and then Satan shows up. Satan shows up and, and it's not, you know, some person with pitchfork and a red jumpsuit and all that other stuff. It could be somebody just, oh, I have a question. And then they'll ask a question. It's like a, a 45 minute question. So if you're thinking that God loves doesn't love everybody, well, what about the people that love God but don't even realize that who God is? Because there's people in the islands that don't even know God, but how can they love God? And they just keep on going, keep on going. You're like, damn, Satan. And then you see the person just, all right, I, I got to go. I got to do something. And they leave. That's Satan immediately. And, that, and, and, and afterwards, after that person leaves, the other person leaves. They're like, okay, did my job. You know, so Satan jumps on people just like that movie Fallen, you know, and especially he could jump on. He jumped on Peter. Right. But if you're not following the Lost Edge Commandments, like a lot of people aren't, then easily jump on people. It's, and we can see that um, during, you know, camps where Legion shows up. One person shows up that way. Another person shows up that way. And it's and it's all encompassing a bunch of demons surrounding us. OK. But um, keep in mind, you're doing the truth. Satan's going to show up. He's going to say, you're going to show up, um, ask you, how come you don't go to Easter anymore? It's like your family. You know what I mean? How come you don't, you don't celebrate Christmas? What do you want a cult? You know, and you try to tell him like, no, it's actually, it's actually in the Bible. Well, that's the way you see it. That's not the way I see it. You try to read it to him. They're like, they cover their ears. You know what I'm saying? So um, he will use people close by you to um, manipulate you, to um, knock you off your square, to have you second guessing yourself and questioning whether or not this is for you. You know what I mean? Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Let's go. We're going to hold that. Let's go to Syrac, the second chapter. All right. So one thing that Israelites... Um, are keenly aware of that the most high God exists, right? One thing that Israelites try to stay away from, you know, I guess rightfully so, but you don't want to, you want to be naive, you know, naive is not good. Um, that Satan exists, you know, you don't have to do a, you know, we, we've done breakdowns on Satan, how he works, how he operates, how he's the adversary that he's sitting, he's the one sitting there in court accusing you. You know what I mean? Um, he's the prosecutor and Yahweh Shai is the defense attorney, right? Um, but you can't be naive that he exists. You believe in the most high. He definitely exists and he will, Satan definitely exists and he will do everything in his power to knock you off. You square, okay? Let's bring that out. Uh, Sirach chapter two and verse one. John, this is the book of Ecclesiastic Cuss. Sirach. Chapter 2 and verse 1. Everybody have it? Please say con. 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 My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So if you're coming to uh, serve the Lord, he's letting you know off top, before we go any further, if you're coming to uh, serve the Lord, prepare for temptation. Prepare for whatever um, sin that's been holding you back or bogging you down, right? For it to be right in your face now. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
whatever you lust after is going to be given to you in abundance. You know, somebody might just accidentally drop off something that, you know, uh, that that um, that you have issue with, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm glad I got past that. And then here comes tons of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, somebody that uh, you've been, you, you got away from a toxic relationship, your phone's ringing now. Where, whatever you have an issue with, temptation wise, it's going to show up in your face. Don't think this is something that is, you know, totally foreign. This is what is written that will happen. Okay. Do, do not be naive. Okay. Once you understand, oh, this is Satan working. Okay. You're not ignorant of his devices. Okay. You know, don't give him the time of day. The devil will eventually flee from you. Okay. Not saying he's not going to come back. Okay. Cause that's just his job. All right. But don't be naive when things happen. Oh man, this is crazy. I don't know. It's just happening to me. Ah, it's not happening to anybody else. It's happening to me. No, it's happening to everybody. This is the, the trials and tribulations we have to go through in this walk. Go ahead. Verse two. Set thy heart upright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Ah, set your heart upright. Okay. Set your mind right. Get your mind right. Okay. And what? Constantly endure. Constantly endure. Constantly endure. Okay. Constantly keep moving forward. All right. Don't let it fall. Don't let it knock you down to where you fall apart. Okay. He, uh, you get clipped. You, you trip or whatever. Get yourself up. Dust yourself off and keep going. Okay. Um, don't worry about no names, uh, gainsayers and naysayers and whatever other sayers that are just, you know, oh, look at him, look at her. And you know what I mean? That's not important because you're going to be the one that's going to be standing in front of the judge. Okay. I remember when you used to do this. I re I remember that. I was there. Remember back then in, in 12th grade when you did this, that, and third? They bring up stuff decades ago, you know, because that's all they got on you. You know what I mean? Don't let them. Don't let them do that. Don't let them uh, knock you down. Okay. Constantly endure these trials. Go ahead. Verse three. Cleave unto him and depart not away that, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Uh -huh. So cleave unto Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Cleave unto the words of God. Okay. And you want to be increased in these last days. Go ahead. Verse four, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Ah, uh, so whatever happens to you, okay, just keep smiling, okay? Because one thing is um, smiling, we talked about this before, the natural endorphins and serotonins and dopamine levels increase when you smile. You don't even got to be happy. Your body don't know that you're not happy. You be having the worst day of your life and you can smile and you feel better because that's the way that's the way the most high made us. OK, you know what I mean? Um, so take it cheerfully, um, whatever is brought upon you, because. Also, it's written in, in Hebrews, you know, what I'm saying we can get that, that. Um, you know, the most high is testing you It's because, you know, he's taking you as sons, you know, and not the bastards. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna eventually get that, but um let's keep going. So when when you're taken into a low estate, all right, be patient. You know, the most high is not gonna keep you there, right? If you if your heart is a right, right? If your heart is where it should be, where your mind is where it should be, then it's just, you know, it's just a test, right? If it's not where it should be, then it's a judgment, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's the way it is. Okay, uh, go ahead. Can you read um, verse 5? Next verse? Yeah, Con. Con, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Con, so you're becoming like fine gold. You know, gold has to be tried in the fire. In order for it to be that pure, pristine gold, it has to be uh, put in the fire. And that's what's happening to us. You know, we're being tried in the fire. 
That's what's happening to you. When you first come into the truth, you're like, man, this is terrible. All oh, a whirlwind. Uh, I lost my job. My tire blew out. And uh, I got to get four new tires. And then they talking about, um, you know, uh, I need a wheel alignment and all these things keep happening at the same time. My wife left me. My husband left me. They talking about I'm crazy. I'm in a cult. Everything starts collapsing. But it looks like you're being buried. It's like a meme. It looks like you're being buried, but really you're being planted. You're about to sprout up. You know, all those things that um that the most high, you know, cleared your path. You know, who's down with you now? You know, now that your car is messed up, who's gonna be able to give you a ride? Who's who's there for you? You know, who's there to talk to you and, and cheer you up? You know what I'm saying? Because when you're partying and everybody was in your car. And when you had all these things, everybody was with you. And now the most I took them things away. And now you see that the other people are gone. But that's a that's a blessing because these people that you thought were your friends, you come to find out they're not. They were just there for the ride. OK, um, hold that. We'll come back. Let's go to Hebrews 12. OK. And we'll start at verse 5. Hebrews 12 and 5. John, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12 and verse 5. And everybody have it, please say con. 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 Verse 5. And ye have forgotten the extortion, which speaketh unto you as exhortation, which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despite not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Huh, don't don't faint when the most high rebukes you. You know what I mean? Despise not the chastening. Why? We well, can explain. Go ahead. Verse 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son who he receiveth. Yeah, he scourges every son that he receiveth. So if you're getting that type of energy, you know what I'm saying, that 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 whirlwind of um, adversity, you know, drinking that cup of adversity, okay, because the Most High loveth, he be chasteneth, chasteneth okay? Go ahead, read verse 7. Verse 7. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealt with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Huh. So he's you 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 you're in a uh, um a great state. You know, the most high is dealing with you, you know? Um you know, if you look at other people's lives, you're like, "Man, God really ain't Destroying him like he's destroying me. First of all, you shouldn't do that, really. Um, look at other people's lives and try to, you know, it's, how come mine's not like that or this is like that? You never know what anybody's going through. You know what I mean? People will just show you things, you know what I mean, that they want you to see, especially something like social media. You hardly see anybody like, oh, man, I got I got 40 cents till payday, man. I'm, you know, this peanut butter and jelly sandwiches is all I got at this point. You know, people hardly put that stuff up online. You know what I mean? Um, to try to like show the the best of what they have, you know. But um, you know, looking at somebody else's life and and expecting it to be, you know, uh, you know, um, legit, you know, like you know, you have all the answers. It's not the case. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Can you read the next verse? Gone. Verse eight. But if ye be without chastisement. Whereof all partakers, then ye are ye bastards and not sons. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So so enjoy that. You know what I'm saying? Um enjoy the, the chastening of the Lord. It's hard to say when when you're going through it, you like enjoy it. How am I gonna enjoy this? But it's not gonna last forever. And when you're done, you know, after the darkness comes the light, right? So Take it, take it all, you know, take it all in, sit there with a smile, grin, you know, pray, you know, pray to the most high, you know, can you, 
can you get this cup away from me? <laughs> it's a little, it's a little overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? You can talk to the Most High God. It's your Father. You can talk to Him. You know, but um, you know, just just keep in mind after you get past this, you're gonna be much better and stronger than you were before. Okay. All right. Let's go back to um Ecclesiasticus. All right, and um, let's go to verse six. To Con, this is the book of two or six. Slack in. Con, this is the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter two and verse six. May everybody have it? Please say Con. 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 Believe in him, and he will help thee. So Slakia, Slakia, believe in him and he will help you. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't be wishy washy. You can't be uh drunk in different um um ideologies and 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 you know swaying back and forth. That okay, so yeah, so I'm an Israelite. This somebody wrote this not too long ago. I'm an Israelite, but I follow Islam. Doesn't make any sense. They they contradict each other. You know so. You know, you're not believing in him. You're not believing in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know, you're believing in anything that, you know, fly by day, fly by night, whatever, whatever comes to you in your way, you're believing in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense too. Buddha, yeah, that makes sense. Krishna, yeah, that makes sense. So you're just all over the place. You want to stick to the slacky, the foundation of it all. Okay. Not no uh subcategories. Okay. Go ahead. You read that again, verse six. Con, verse six. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Huh. You got to put your trust in Yahweh Hashem Yahushat, not Muhammad and all these other and white Jesus and all this other stuff. The Most High is the way to go. Okay, let's go back to Mark. So you're going to deal with some things. It's not going to be easy. But it's worth it. Aiming for the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of the most high God. Of righteousness. You know. And all this evil and death and all this other stuff. That we had to deal with on a daily basis. And these curses are passed away. So it's worth it. So keep on going. All right. Uh, Where were we? Mark 4 and 15. 15, Khan. Well, verse 16 now, Salaki. Khan, you can read 15 again. Khan, this is the book of St. Mark, chapter 4 and verse 15. Everybody have it? Please say Khan. 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 The sower soweth the word. And these things that and these and these are they by the wayside where the word is sowed. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taken away the word that was sown in their hearts. Uh, go ahead. Verse 16. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. Uh, it's like, what? I'm an Israelite? Oh, man, this is beautiful. That means I'm a real Jew. This is a unbelievable. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it, man. Right? Just so excited. You know, it sounds so good. It's it's sweet in their mouth, right? And, you know, um, you know, they're, they're, what do I got to do? All right, here, take my number. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, we'll correspond and yeah, I'm gonna go to the feast days. I'm gonna, okay, that sounds good. Everything sounds good. It sounds good, right? But of course, there's things that transpire. Okay, go ahead. Verse 17. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves and so endure, but for a time afterward. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Con. So now 
you're going to have problems. You know what I mean? You're going to, you know, you've been following Christmas since you've been born. Now you're like, oh, I'm not going to follow Christmas anymore. It's going to be an issue. You know what I'm saying? With the people you've been following Christmas with or, you know, celebrating Christmas, not following Christmas, celebrating Christmas with um, things you've been doing. Now you're doing opposite. You're doing the new moons. You're doing feast days, perim. Uh, feast of tabernacles you're like you're gonna camp in the woods for the week what's what it was with you you know what i mean you're gonna have uh, persecution you're gonna have people looking at you funny um when you're wearing fringes you know what i'm saying that might if you're self-conscious of things like that it could it could bother you i know people that they said it, it bothered them you know that they were kind of embarrassed to wear their fringes you know what i'm saying um you're dealing with some things that because you know, like Christ said, if the world hates you. No, it hated me first. So you're telling people that, hey, man, you're Israelite. Keep going. Follow these lost edge commandments. Repent. You know what I mean? And people are like, I don't want to repent from anything. I don't think I ever did anything wrong in my life. You know, so you're, you're getting backlash from people. It's not as easy as you think. You know what I mean? Like, hey, don't um, buy stuff on the Sabbath. F you. You know what I'm saying? Somebody give you F you. Like, I'm trying to save your life. What are you, are you cussing me out for? But that's some things you're going to have to endure. You know what I mean? And um, they immediately get offended. Like, oh, I'm done with this. Man, I was, life was a lot easier when I was just showing up to Christian church, sitting in the back pew for half hour, hour, however long, you know, churches. If it's the uh, Baptist church, might be all day. We just sit in the back, get up, leave, go get something to eat, come back, sit right in the back and feel that, you know, sing a couple songs and you're thinking that's going to get you in the kingdom of heaven, you know, so people will go that direction rather than the actual, you know, dealing with the persecution and so forth and so on. Go ahead. Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Huh. Go ahead. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things in the entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. John, so you have the word, you know what I mean? But then what? Deceitfulness of, of riches, you know what I'm saying? You get, get this bread, I get this bag, you know what I mean? The lust of other things enter in. It starts choking the word, you know what I mean? Um, people and, and people can make doctrines off of that, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, it's not that bad, you know what I mean? Because, because, well, it says don't do it, but then say don't, don't do it, you know what I mean? Like people, and, and then they start uh, throwing shots at other law abiding Israelites that are trying to keep the law of statute commandments, but um. You know, it's those those thorns, and it'll choke the word until it's all gone. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I gotta work. Every you get a brother that has to work all the time, right? And it's you know, brothers that work seven days a week. You know, but um, one thing you start to notice that work starts really affecting the word, and instead of oh, I gotta work on the weekends, you know what I'm saying? It becomes you know, new moons and just every other. Uh, feast day and there's brothers that less trust and believe they got to work all the time but then there's brothers that do work all the time but when they get off on the way home they're listening to the classes they're 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 asking can you send me the precepts can you you know um they're still involved you know what i'm saying it didn't completely the deceitfulness or riches didn't choke off the word completely to the point where totally out of the truth not wearing fringes shaved the beard and you know no longer goes by any type of hebrew name and now they're making 10 part series about why i left the black hebrew israelites you know what i'm saying so it's a difference in between having to work all the time and having to work um, all the time and still being the truth okay if that makes any sense to anybody Okay. Um, go ahead. Can you read the next verse? Con, verse 20. 20. 
And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some and some in a hundred. Huh. So now you got the you got the word, you're not making any excuses. You know what I mean? You understand the the, the temptations that's coming. You get it. Uh, you're not letting, you know, you're solid. You, it, it, everything makes sense. You're like, man, I knew we were going through this for a reason. I just didn't know what the reason was. Oh, our ancestors wasn't following the law, statute, commandments, and the scriptures. And that's why I'm in the situation I'm in now. I'm going to follow the law, statute, commandments, and the scriptures so I can help out my future generations, help out my family, help out uh, the nation as a whole. You know, so the most high will hear my voice and and most high willing enough of us are praying and crying out to the most high like like it, like it was in ancient Egypt. And he heard our cries and he sent Moses and Aaron to tell Pharaoh to let my people go and destroyed ancient Egypt. I'm going to aim to do that to the best of my ability and nothing's going to stop me. If I trip, I'm going to get back up, I'm not going to stop and I'm going to bring forth fruit, you know, let people know, yo, you, you got to show the people, you know, you're, you, you're the most important people on the planet. You know, you, you plant the seed, the most high waters it. All right. Con, you read verse uh, 21. Con, verse 21. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel? Bushel? Or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick. Huh? So you gotta let your light shine. You know, once you find out that you're God's chosen people, you know what I'm saying. You come, you you find out that uh, that um, you know, you should be following these laws, statutes, commandments, and then you tell others. You know what I'm saying? You can't just hide it. It's it's crazy too. You know, where my fringes, people come up to me like, yo. Shalom. Like quiet. I'm like, is there anybody listening to us right now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, uh, America has, uh, has taught, you know, through uh, its media and everything that these people, you know, we're a, um, a dangerous group and all this other stuff. And, you know, so people are kind of scared to even say that they're Israel, you know what I mean? But you got to let your light shine. You know, these are the last days. This, you know, Put something on your resume, you know. You can you get in front of the the ultimate judge, you know. I don't want to say I've been doing nothing my entire time, hiding my talents, which we're going to get to that as well. All right, let's go to Revelation one verse three. So, what helps in all this, right? In all this, what what helps uh get you know get temptation out of your way? You know what I mean? Um, what what helps uh you know, um, not worrying about the, the the thoughts of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. What what helps in that? All right, let's go to Revelation one verse three. This always Con, this is the book. Con, this is the book Revelation, chapter one and verse three. And everybody have it. Please say Con. 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 Blessed is he that readeth. Huh, slack it. And this, but, slack it. Blessed is he that readeth. You know what I mean? You got to read. You have to read this book. You know what I'm saying? This is the word of God. You know, people walk around with a Bible on their, on their, on their, on their desk and say, well, how come God, God, come down here and talk to me. He's right here. You got the word of God right there. You know, um, the amazing things that he's done to help and assist our ancestors in their time of need and their time where they're getting destroyed and there's no hope or they thought there was no hope left and they prayed to the most high, they fasted and he delivered them. You know, that's amazing things, you know, that, that are documented not only in this book, but throughout history, you know, the, the flood is documented in history. Our Exodus is documented in history. You know what I'm saying? You know, they 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 try their best to say, you know, none of that stuff really happened, but 
historical records tell you that it did. All right, go ahead. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of his of this prophecy. Slaki and the prophecies. You know, you get to read what's going to happen next from somebody that lived thousands of years ago. Name another book that can that that allows that, that can, that, that, that is true. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people say, oh, Nostradamus said this. What else did Nostradamus say? I'm sure, you know, all the, all Nostradamus really had to do was read the Bible and, you know, write stuff down. I'm like, yeah, I, you know, that's plagiarism. I said that first. No, you didn't. That's plagiarism. Same thing with Muhammad. There will be, uh, the, the deserts return into plush places. Yeah. Isaiah said that already, you know? So, our book has prophecies in it. Go ahead. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. Ah, so you read them and you do them. The time's at hand. No time to waste. Make haste. All right, let's go to Matthew 25. Matthew 25 and verse 14, Bubba Shaw. Con, this is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 14. There I have it. Please say con. 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 For the kingdom of heaven is a is as a man traveling into a far country who called his, his own servants and delivered unto them his, his goods. Yeah, so another parable is talking about a man. He's about to go on a trip and call the servants like, hold on, come here. We got to, um, we got to give you guys something. Right. And, uh, go ahead. Can you read verse 15? Verse 15. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a, another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Ah, so to depending on their ability of these servants, he's given them talents, right? It's strange that the name is actually a talent, but a talent is worth about $935, right? But of course, we know talents is you have a talent. You you can able you're able to do things, right? So he's giving these talents to um, you know, the one he gave five because he has the the ability to to hold five. You know what I'm saying? He's actually you know the the um the man can see that uh this this um servant is worthy of five talents, so to speak. Okay. Go ahead, can we verse, um, what's that, 16? John, verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Ah, so he doubled. He doubled his, his worth, so to speak. Go ahead. Verse 17. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. Ah, so the man had two, he doubled as well. Go ahead. Verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged into the earth and hid his Lord's money. So he hid it. He said, all right, I'm not going to try to do anything. I'm hiding it. So let's we'll see what happens. Go ahead. Verse 19. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. Ah, go ahead. Verse 20. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I gain beside them five talents more. Ah, go ahead. Verse 21. His Lord say unto him, well done, though good and faithful servant, thou hast been faithful over a few things. 
I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Huh. So, like I said, this is, um, he said, this is a parable for the kingdom of heaven. You know, can you read that one more time? Slakia, verse 21. Yeah. Verse 21. His Lord saith to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Huh, so he's, he's saying, you know, you did a good job. You took the talents, you took what I gave you, right? And you doubled it, you multiplied it. You just didn't sit down twiddling your thumbs. You just didn't sit down on the couch watching TV all day. You know, this is the difference between uh, being an Israelite and a Christian is um, a lot, first off, you know, following the laws, that commandments, you know, it's, it's huge. But it's a, you know, it's it's interactive, you know, you, you actually got to do some things, you know, you got to, um, you got to add on, you know, you just don't want to be stagnant, you know what I mean? Especially in these last days, right? You want to keep adding on. When I say add on, does that mean, you know, you search the scriptures and find out that Jesus was wearing Gucci flip-flops? Nah, brother, you you going off. He was wearing Gucci flip-flops. I got the, I, I could show you in the scriptures, you know, and, 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 and you ain't down. You don't know. You don't know. See, that's why you ain't going to kingdom of heaven. Cause you know, you like you're searching out things that don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I say, you know, everything matters, but at the same time, you know, uh, you got to get into the weightier issues, not what kind of flip flops you yeah, how I was wearing. Okay. Go ahead. Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. So he flipped it too. All right. He doubled up. Go ahead. Verse 23, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Huh. So taking the talents, taking the things that the Most High has given you and then using them for uh, um, his, his purpose. That's what this is about. You know what I'm saying? Um, we talked about what well, the scriptures talk about, you know, not getting a candle and putting it underneath the bed. You know what I mean? Like, why would you do that? You got to let your light shine. Okay. So you have talents, like literal, literal talents. You might have, I'm good with music. I'm good with art. Um, I'm good with communicating. I'm good with writing. I'm good. It's somewhere down the line that you have a talent on and, you know, using that to propel the ministry, the gospel, the good news, you know, how I shot die for our sins, our sins, the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, you know, so we have a hope, a chance of redemption, of salvation, you know, making it to the kingdom of heaven. You know, this is, this is literally in front of our eyes. You know, we have access to it. We just got to do it. You know what I mean? So when given an opportunity to shine, take that opportunity, you know, be, be willing, be able to have a, um, answer for anything. Why do you wear those fringes? Why did you celebrate Christmas? Why don't you, da, 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 da. you know what I mean? Because you're the devil and the most high is going to deal with you. That's not, you know what I mean? Listen, you, you, you're waking people up. You know what I mean? Now, there's a time and place for that, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, talking to your people, asking them, you know, answering their questions um, because they don't know. You know, how many how many Israelites do you know other than, of course, you know, being here part of HOI, you know what I mean? Um, or anybody else watching this that's not part of HOI, I just found out you're an Israelite, you know? How many Israelites live on your block? How many Israelites live on your neighborhood? So it's not, 
I mean, it's 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 probably all Israelites, you know what I mean, as far as like um unless you box getting gentrified at this time or whatever. But um, you know, to be able to you're probably the one person that that is gonna answer this person's question. You know what I'm saying? Like you might be the first person, you might be the last. So having an answer to give is important. Okay. So don't hide your talents. All right. Find out when you find out who you are, make haste to follow the commandments. And then, you know, you'll be able to explain it to others. Okay. Go ahead. Can we read next verse? Verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that art, that art in hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Go ahead. Verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Time. So um, this was says in the GNT, right? Just to, it's, a, you know, a translation is easier to uh, understand. Verse 24. Then the servant who had received the 1,000 coins came in and said, Sir, I know you are a hard man. You reap harvest, harvests where you did not plant, and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. Like, you you, you, you a hard rock. I, I, I ain't messing with you. You know what I'm saying? This is what you do. I was afraid, so I went off and hid your money in the ground. Look, here it is, what belongs to you. So he's like, look, man, I'm scared of you. You know what I'm saying? So... As as we all should be scared of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh you know what I mean. Fear is very good. Fear is a good thing in this walk. You know what I'm saying because you're dealing with a power that knows everything you're afraid of. There you're dealing with a power that can lead you to the brink of pain by death. I mean, Saki, death by pain, and bring you back, and then do it again, and bring you back. Like this is this is. This is a, a God you should definitely fear, right? But does that mean you're so scared that you hide your talents? Is it, are you so afraid of God that you're like, I ain't even going to mess with you? You know, um, I'm going to be on individualite status and I'm going to, you know, and that might be good for some people. You know what I mean? Um, I would say, like the scriptures say, gather yourselves together, a nation not desired. Because as soon as that sheep runs off by itself, it's subjected to a whole lot, you know, and um, we can see that in doctrine, you know what I'm saying? Instead of bouncing doctrines off each other, like you call the elder, like, elder, does this mean this, that, and the third? And you break it down and show you what it means. If you by yourself, you're like, yeah, that's exactly what it means. And and yeah, I wish I was wearing Gucci flip-flops. And, and, and this is what we should be doing. So pork isn't that bad. You know what I mean? You start going to way, way off to the left doctrines. You know what I'm saying? Before anybody says anything, pork is that bad. Stay away from it. It's not to be eaten. Okay. Um, but coming together, a nation not desired is, is, uh, is important in these last days. And it can help you cope with all the things you're going to go through. You know what I'm saying? You're going to go through it. Everybody does. Okay. So it's not, you know, um, totally like foreign just to you okay uh where are we at verse 26 bring that up uh, going to uh verse 27 so lock like you <clears throat> oh con, con, con. verse 27 oh, oh read, read verse 26 for me oh sure verse 26 his lord answered and said unto him Thy wicked and slothful servant, thy newest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Huh, so he's he's wicked and slothful. You didn't do anything. You just got the information, you got the talents, and you did nothing with it. Like it's literally like you're on the clock. Found out I'm an Israelite. Okay, what do you do the next day? You know what I'm saying? Like, did you study? Did you you just start twiddling your thumbs? You know what I mean? Um, you don't want to be slothful because it's easy to be slothful. Slothful is just doing nothing. You know what I mean? And 
How hard is it to do nothing? You know, um, ironically, it it is difficult to do nothing because you're going to get vexed. You're going to have trouble. It's not going to be, you know, um, just a, a walk in the park to sit there and, and do nothing because, you know, with slothfulness comes what? Poverty. You know what I mean? You don't work. You don't eat. You know, you sit around watching TV all day. Eventually, your light's going to go off and your TV's going to go off and you're going to be stuck. You know, so being slothful isn't easy. It feels, you know, oh, this is simple, you know, but it's a lot. Things will happen a lot smoother for you and better when you start moving and shaking. You know what I mean? You get stuck sitting in the same spot. Your body is not meant to be doing nothing. You know, our our ancestors you know, had to go hunting, you know what I'm saying? They had to go hunt for the food, not just get in the car and drive to the grocery store. You know, things have gotten a lot easier for us and our body's not moving as, as much as it should, you know? So that can cause depression, okay? Don't be slothful in this walk. Don't do nothing. Do, go above and beyond. Exceed expectations, you know what I mean? That in itself will bring... um um joy into your life you know the most high will give you uh benefits you know what i mean that that look at this look at this guy look at this girl you know look at this brother look at this sister you know what i'm saying look at this young israelite um going above and beyond um what 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 most people would expect you know what i mean but you can never do enough when you uh uh um praising the most high you can never do enough all right um, go ahead. Can you read the next verse? Kind of verse 27. Thou all this therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming, I should have received my own with Khan. So he says, Slack you for uh, in the GNT. Well, then you should have deposited my money in the bank. And I would received it all back with interest when I returned. Like you, you just buried it in the earth. He's put it in the bank where I get some interest rates. All right. Go ahead. Can we verse 28? Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which have 10 talents. Yeah, you don't even give me that. You know, you weren't rocking it right, you know? And give it to the to the brother that was was diligent. In order to get the five talents, diligent to add on the five talents, and now he's getting your talent. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and you should really, with this, ask yourself, be honest with yourself, right? You got to examine yourself in these last days. Am I the type of person that always procrastinates? Am I known for being slothful? Am I known for, you know what I mean? Like if somebody would, you know, rate me, on the level of procrastination and slothfulness, where would I be? Am I hard-headed? Am I stiff-necked? Am I rebellious? When people say, go left, do I always go right? Am I always, am I that guy? You know what I'm saying? And if you come back to the to the level of understanding, like, yes, I am, you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be stiff-necked, hard-headed, and rebellious in, in this walk. You want to be open and humble and able to learn. You know what I mean? Like, I don't believe that. I don't believe none of that. I don't believe none of that. But without doing any research. Okay? So, off top, would yeah, how would it give you one talent or five in the way you lived up until now? You got to ask yourself. Okay? Uh, go ahead. Verse 29. For unto every one that have shall be given and he shall have abundance, but from him that have not shall be taken away, even that which he had. Huh. So like the, the guy with the five talents, he got added on more. The guy with the one talent that was, I'm sure, slothful before just to get the one talent to begin with, everything he got, he got taken away. All right. Okay, so let's go with verse 30. Come on, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. Huh. So when it's talking about um the weeping and gashing of teeth, um, 
It's going to be a lot of crying and a lot of pain. Okay, so to avoid that, avoid not having on your, your garment in the wedding, not having these law statutes commandments on, on you know, girded about, you know, um, your the ar full armor of God, you know what I mean? Your loins girded, your, your chest plate of right, your breastplate of righteousness, you know what I mean? Um, Make sure you're, you're wearing the, the full armor of God, right? The um the sword, the word of the Lord, the boots of peace, right? Um, helmet of salvation, if not mistaken. Yeah, and um, and uh, loins. Hold on, sloppy. Loins of is that the law? It's so like the loins girt about with truth. Yep. And the truth and the law is the truth. Okay. Breastplate of righteousness. Ah, so make sure you got your wedding garment on and make sure that you double up on your talents. Make sure you you uh you keep going further in this truth. You don't get lazy, you don't get stagnant. Okay. Um, let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Chapter seven. And verse fourteen. Couple more scriptures. Don, this the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. Will everybody have it? Please say con. 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 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Huh. So what we got to do, we got to humble ourselves. If you're stiff necked. Nobody could tell me anything. Um, I don't believe nobody. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, you know, trust in the most high God, you know what I'm saying? Um, but definitely question yourself as, if a white man tells me something, of course I believe it. He says it's going to rain today, it's going to rain today. You know what I'm saying? Black man says it's going to rain today. Nigga, who, who learned you? You know what I mean? Do you have that mentality? Is that how you think? Okay. Be honest with yourself. You know, it's just, you know, this is open-ended for anybody to think about. Okay. Because we got to examine ourselves in the last days to make sure that we're worthy. Okay. So I say that, um, trust in God, right? But be advised that the most high uses man. You know, if somebody tells you something that can be beneficial to you, can be beneficial to you, look into it. You know what I mean? Um, walking in this truth and believing no one, nothing you hear is uh, you know, you you might be missing out on some amazing revelations, you know. Not the revelation that Jesus wore Gucci flip flops. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about that. You know what I mean? And getting into the the flat earth, round earth, and you know things that when you're sitting in front of the 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 judge, not really going to matter. You know what I'm saying? But um, things that can help you, things that can help you move forward. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you got to pray. You got to seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. So it's repentance, following the law, statutes, commandments in the Bible, praying for uh, guidance, help, uh, understanding, wisdom. You know what I mean? And the most high will hear from heaven like he did our ancestors. You know, the more righteous we become and the more we pray, the more that prayer gets answered. If we if we turn our ear from hearing the law, then our prayer becomes an abomination. Which one do you want? It's 
it's right there in front of you. You know what I'm saying? You want your prayer to prayer to pierce the clouds, you know, or do you want it to fall, you know, be an abomination, a filthy, disgusting thing? You know, uh, I'll keep bringing this up every time I talk about prayer. <laughs> that the sister passed out at Passover. The elders of Box said everybody turned and faced the east and prayed. And we were done praying. He said, how's the sister doing? Oh, she just woke up. Can't make that up. You know, everybody was there to see it. Wasn't no leap of faith. Steve Martin and hopping over there and she's, uh, okay, what you, after this happens and you fall out and pass out, this, this is real life. You know, at, at revivals, they do that. And they're like, oh, it's a miracle. Pass the collection plate, everybody. You know? Don't give me 20, give me 50s, give me hundreds. You know what I mean? That's what they do at the, the fake revivals and churches and all that other stuff. But that was something that you've seen in real life. If you were there to experience it, you've seen it. You know what I mean? So um, that's what happens, okay? The most high will hear is your prayer from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And that's what we ask for, that we can get these sins off of us and our land can be healed, get these uh dusty amalekites out of our land and you know cleanse it and we can go to the land filled with milk and honey you know um let's go to joel a couple more scriptures y'all matter of fact hold that hold joel Matter of fact, yeah, yeah, let's go to Joel. Let's lock it. Joel 1 and verse 3, I believe it is. God. God, this is the book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse 3. When everybody have it, please say con. Uh, uh. God, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Uh, so this, so we don't forget. You know what I'm saying. So you got the word. You found out that you were Israelite. Your children have to know this. Their children have to know this. You're gonna have to explain this when you wake up, and when you go to sleep. When you arise <laughs> and throughout your day. All right, let me get Deuteronomy 10. All right. So they don't forget. They don't fall back on, oh, I guess I could be a Muslim. Oh, I guess I could. No, no, don't, don't leave your children out there like that. You know, we don't know how much time we have on this planet. We don't know whether the Most High is going to take us or not. So this is something that you're going to have to talk to your children about. And um, show them, you know, give them examples. You know, when they're able to see something like when my child, you know, is having an issue with somebody at school, I'm like, okay, you know, go to the most high. And then come to find out anybody he's having an issue with, they end up fighting each other. And I'm like, what happened today? They fought each other. So, okay, you see that? That's the, you went, you talked to the most high guy. He's like, yeah, that's what happens. Okay. God, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. God, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. When everybody have it, please say con. Con. And now, Israel, what do the Lord Yahweh thy power require of thee, but to fear Yahweh thy power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. All right, go ahead. Verse 13 To keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statues which I command thee this day for thy good. All right, go ahead. 
behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahweh thy power, the earth also with all that therein is. Uh, most how runs this, you know what I mean? There's no, oh, maybe I should be a Muslim. For what? <laughs> uh, we, we aim for the top, you know what I mean? Not the bottom. Go ahead. Verse 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Yeah, we're at the top of the food chain. You got to let your children know this. That's an excellent precept, too. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 7. All right. And um, you know, uh, let your children know that, you know, there's some things that aren't going to be, it's not going to be easy. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't say it's going to be easy. You know, it's, it's, we read scriptures saying that it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard times, hard days, so forth and so on. But it's going to be worth it. It's definitely worth it. Let's bring that out. Deuteronomy uh, 6, verse 7. Con, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 7. Everybody have it? Please say Con. Uh, Slaki, start verse 5. Verse 5. Con. Huh. And thou shalt love Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Con, go ahead. And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. Huh. Read on. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thy lies down, and when thy rises up. Con, so all the time, you know what I mean, and that's that's much better than um, you know, um, than anything you could really tell your children. You know what I mean? Is is uh, developing a solid relationship with the Most High, letting him know that this is your power. This is your strength. This is your shield and buckler. You know what I mean? Now that you know, you have to let your children know. And that's very important. Okay. Um, so let's go to uh, Joshua chapter 24. And verse 14. And we got it, you can bring it out. John, this is the book of Joshua, chapter 24, and verse 14. Everybody have it? Please say con. 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 Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in serenity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Con, go ahead. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Ammonites. And whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Huh. And that shall be your, you know, that should be your mindset. You know, um, what everybody else is doing, you know, shouldn't affect you. You know, your house, you know that you are an Israelite. You know that you're God's chosen people through your bloodline, through your father's side of the family. Um, so-called black Hispanic and Native American, you might be like, I don't even know who my father is. Well, that's a curse. So this is possibility that you are part of God's chosen. You know what I'm saying? And 
the spirit will manifest, you know, the spirit will, um, if it, if it, uh, goes according with the scriptures and the teachings, then it's a, it's a solid chance that you will be Israelite. They say the jury's out, but you know, the spirit, um, will reveal. Okay. But for your house, serve the most high God, serve the higher power, serve the, the God of gods, the Lord of Lords, you know, that, that run all this, you know, why, why do what our ancestors did and serve the, the guys of the Amorites or, you know what I mean? The guys of the Canaanites, you know, that, that were idols and that did nothing but collect dust. Okay. Let's finish out with, um, Ecclesiastes in the so-called Old Testament 12 and Let's do 12 and 12. Okay. Stick to the scriptures. Stick to the law, statutes, commandments. Um, There's nothing wrong with reading the Quran, meaning read, see what it means, you know, see what they're talking about. You know what I mean? But that I would definitely, being new into the truth, get into the law, statutes, commandments. You know, those things, um, when you want to teach Others, um, you got to be grounded in your foundation first. I went and go, oh, I'm reading, I'm reading this. Today I'll read the Quran and tomorrow I'll read the Bible and this, that, and third. If you're new into this, make sure you read the Bible. You know what I mean? Get grounded into that. And then you can move on to other books for teaching purposes. You know what I mean? Um, where you learn a lot in the Quran, it's not from a prophet. You know what I mean? It's from a a, a Arab or a white man, people say Muhammad was, that um, learned from the Israelites. So if he's learning from the Israelites who learned the Bible, then read the Bible. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, and then time will pass where you start reading other things because you, now you becoming a teacher. Okay. Uh, let's bring that out. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 12. Ah, there's 144 out of one. There that is. All praises to Yahweh Shai. 144 has been popping up a lot lately. Um, <laughs> whether it's that Passover or you know what I mean, it's the opening, closing all all the time. We're we're seeing a lot of 144s. Sealing sealing the elect. Judgment is quickly approaching. Ultimate judgment, right? Uh -huh. Gone. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 12. When everybody have it, please say con. Con. And further, by these, my son, be a, a, a damage, of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weirdness of the flesh. Huh. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, oh, I got these 14,000 books and 14, 15,000 books. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, there's nothing wrong with studying, but uh, you have to study and put things into motion, into action. Okay. Um, there's so many people online that you could see like, man, I read these 10,000 books and, you know, what I, you know, Job is Edomite and, 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 um, you know, how wish I had uh, Gucci flip flops, you know what I mean? Just a whole bunch of doctrines mixed into one. OK, um, it's a weariness of the, flesh, of the flesh, you know. When you learn these scriptures, you learn these uh, the Torah, it's time to teach. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, everybody just running out to the to the to the highways and byways and saying I'm a teacher, uh, a learned Christian will put you to shame. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, it's, it's important really to, uh, to get on these classes and, um, to go over scriptures on your own. And, um, you know, when it's time to go out there and teach, you know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Give me the next verse. Uh, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So that's what it always comes down to. You know what I mean? Fearing God and keeping his commandments. 
That's it. As an as Israelite, what's your job? Fear God and keep his commandments. What's the meaning of life? Fear God and keep his commandments. Why are we here? To fear God and keep his commandments. It's the whole duty of man. You know, who 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 knew that the meaning of life was in the Bible? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's some, uh, Solomon summed it up perfectly. Here the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Go ahead. Verse 14. Verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Huh, and, that, and that's a way to, that's definitely a, a reason to fear the most high God. Every evil thing you, you've done, just put it out there for the whole world to see. You know what I'm saying? Like it will, it will, it will be uh, involved in judgment. You know what I'm saying? Um, for instance, right. Those are, uh, um, with these drill rappers, right? Drill rappers in Philadelphia. One of them was I uh, brought this up. I didn't know it was him, but I brought this up during uh, um, I believe the closing of Passover. That you know, had instant judgment. You know, it's, it's quick. So they go out to shoplift. They're gonna boost from um store uh, Lily Lemon or something like that. I don't know. But it has the tights. So they go out there to boost and cop sees them. Instant judgment. I don't even know if they have a chance to steal yet. But he, you know, the guy knew the car. Like it's probably not the first time he'd been up there, right? So they chased them and they got into a crash, um, a fiery crash, man. Like people burned alive in that car. Um, but come to find out, one of the people in the car. His name is like murder something. Like, that's his name. Murder, like, that's what they call him, murder. Murder Loke, something like that. They call him Jason, like Jason Voorhees that kills people. That's And these are drill rappers that call him that. So he's not just one and done when it comes to murder. This is what he does. So what the Most High do? He, you know, now they clowning him because, you know, drill rappers are... uh they talk trash after one of their enemies gets killed. So they're like, call him the Lulu lemon head. And, you know, the Paul Walker, you know what I mean? They're they just ripping them. And, um, you know, God will bring all that to fruition. Like God will bring everything that you've done and put it out there for the whole world to see. So, you know, while his family might mourn that he's dead, like, they got a whole bunch of people laughing at him because this guy was a killer that died in a car accident. Like, it obviously was an accident, you know what I mean? Literally, you know, the Most High knew who... Some people survived that crash, which was a mangled car, and, like, people died, and he was one of the people that died. So, you know, judgment can come. You know, so it's, it's best to stay focused and do the right thing so, you know, you can avoid that fiery judgment. You know, you can avoid that uh, backlash from Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and make it into a kingdom of heaven of peace and prosperity where there's lions walking around eating hay and there's children playing in the streets and, you know, spiritual powers, brothers flying to different planets and everything. That's what's written in these scriptures. And you have a very uh, uh, real opportunity to make it to that level if you stay focused and follow the law, statutes, commandments written in scriptures. Hopefully you uh, were edified. 